For the next three years, the feds say there are no plans to change immigration levels from targets previously set. Ottawa will maintain, pardon me, its target of 485,000 permanent residents, as you can see there on the screen ahead of you in 2024, and 500,000 in 2025. And the news is that that level of 500,000 permanent residents will hold steady or stabilize starting in 2026. Immigration Minister Mark Miller is with us live now from Parliament Hill. Hi, Minister. Good to have you here. Thanks for making the time. Thank you, Vashi. I wanted to start off and just ask about that stabilization as of 2026. I know the, the targets that you set out are for a three-year period, but how, how long do you, uh, are you working under the assumption that those rates will be stabilized over a longer term? It's a really good question, and I think, you know, we have been defining the needs in broad macroeconomic strokes over the last little while and made some very ambitious increases that I think Canada needs, and, and the consensus that we've created in Canada is that we need it. Uh, but now what we're seeing is the need to take stock of what that actually really looks like and the impacts that this has had on different areas of the economy, housing being one, healthcare being another. And while that economic motive is still there, what we've heard, particularly given the strategic immigration review that the results of which I, I announced yesterday is Canadians want us to do a better job, one, get, sort of getting our house in order, making sure uh, the commitments that we've made as a government we can actually fulfill, but also that we're doing this in a way that is a little more measured to what industry, what labor is telling us, and what the sectoral microeconomic needs are in this country. So taking, uh, taking this year's level plan and saying, let's just keep that at 500,000, Let's take a look at what uh, the impact has been in the last couple of years on different areas in housing, healthcare, care, um, both good, bad, and, and, and anything in between. is something I think we need to do and what we've been told to do, not only by, 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 by Canadians, but by our partners in the provinces. So it's something that I think is reasonable, makes sense, and, and we're going to take this year to, to refine our tools a little bit uh, and, and adapt them to a country that is ever evolving and the economic needs are evolving. Yeah, I certainly, Minister, understand the impetus for, for holding the line and being able to assess the impact of those numbers in the interim. But I guess what I'm trying to figure out is by what metric you're going to judge as of 2026, whether the needle moves again, or if, in fact, the numbers that you have set out are, quote unquote, successful or have worked. Yeah, and again, good question. What we need to start looking at and what we've been told we need to start looking at is the impact on different areas uh, of 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 Canada, but also in different areas of the economy. What we're hearing is, well, we need more construction jobs. Um, we're not doing a terribly good work of matching supply and demand. Our public policy tools, despite some innovation that's been made by the previous minister, are not good enough to adapt to the needs of, of construction. And if we're going to meet those construction targets that we're being very ambitious towards 2030 on, uh, we're going to need 100,000 more workers. Those won't all come from Canada's domestic economy. They're going to come from abroad. But right now, we don't necessarily have the proper surgical tools to address that. So too in the healthcare industry. And in that industry, it's very complex, obviously, because of accreditation of, of people, whether it's doctors or nurses, and the role that the provinces have to play. So that's another conclusion that we heard yesterday from the strategic, the strategic immigration review, is that we have to look at foreign accreditation and get our provinces and, and cities in on the discussion to make sure they are doing their job, to make sure they're integrating a really important part of the economy that is, uh, is dwindling if we look at the aging of the population. So those services are at risk if we don't have... Um, migrants. How many is the big question that I think we have to resolve, and I think our public policy tools, our analytical tools, aren't as refined as they really should be, and that's something we need to get better in the next year on. And I get the economic imperative and the analysis on that end of things, but I guess I would ask on the other end of things, if you are confident that the government has put in place or has worked with provincial governments to put in place an adequate number of supports to even handle the targets that you've set right now. Because I know you're as familiar as the rest of uh, our audience watching tonight at figures like, for example, a report that just came out last week from Food Bank Canada that says more than a quarter of food bank users right now are immigrants who have been in Canada for less than a decade, a usage rate that has doubled since 2016. I know you're familiar with polling. We'll get into that in a second as well. But the housing crisis has also sort of amplified a lack of support for immigrants who are coming here. How will you know you have enough supports? And are you confident? Can you tell Canadians tonight that you will in order to welcome the number of people you have set out? So I think a couple of things, and we have to break down what you're saying into, into different categories. We've made some very important public policy decisions in the last few years, particularly with respect to Ukraine, with respect to Syria, with respect to Afghanistan, with respect to Canada as an open country that Canadians expect us to fulfill. Um, but that has had some impacts on uh, processing times, on 
on housing, on, on the healthcare system. But the reflection that I have to do when I look at permanent residency is what are the tools that I dispose as the Federal Minister of Immigration in order to rectify that? Certainly, I don't think people would say, let's fix that by diminishing economic migration, which is a net increase to the gross domestic product, and about 96% of the net increases into the labor force in the last year. So it is important to talk about apples and apples and not apples and oranges, because we are talking at times about different things, even though people do tend to sense uh, and put these all into, in, into one category. Uh, the other thing we need to examine, again, the results of the Strategic Im Immigration Review, and part of your question is, do we look at longer timelines with respect to our, um, our, our, our levels? Because three years is not a very long time to plan for if you're in the construction industry, though that's an industry that looks in segments of five and 10 years. And that is, the uh, again, the importance of what we launched yesterday, which was taking a little broader look at what we are examining when we're setting levels uh, for the future. So do I think we can do it? Absolutely, but we've got to get a little more coordinated and a little more organized as a country in order to welcome people in, in the way that Canadians expect. The statistics that we're seeing aren't, um, aren't really driven by xenophobia, they're driven by uh, the expectation no. that we'd be a little more coordinated and we can welcome people. Yeah, that's exactly why, Minister, I put the question to you. I take your point about not comparing apples to oranges. But if you look at, for example, the polling data and the way in which it's changed in just a year, I'll read to you a section of what um, Environic said uh, in 2022. Even as the country is now taking in more than 400,000 newcomers each year, 7 in 10 Canadians express support for current immigration levels, the largest majority recorded in those surveys in 45 years. Just one year later, this month, last month, there has been a significant increase in the belief that there is too much immigration to Canada, due in large part to a jump in the proportion citing concerns about how newcomers might be contributing to the current housing crisis. This reflects, quote, a dramatic shift since a year ago. I understand you have a suite of policy measures that you can implement as Minister of Immigration, but you're part of a government that largely said over the past year that it, housing was not a federal responsibility, that it was primarily a provincial re responsibility. How much responsibility does your government bear for not adequately addressing a housing crisis that has greatly impacted Canadians' views on immigration? I mean, being the only federal government in 30 years to invest significantly in housing, I think it is an important responsibility. It's a, it's a responsibility we need to assume even more. But again, this is something that provinces need to do as well, and we need to coordinate better with, with provinces. I think in those same, uh, in those same polls and those same um, public inquiries that, or that, that, that we do in different forms, if we ask people whether they thought that uh, we could, if, if, if we said to people that, those houses couldn't get built without immigration, and do they still believe that we should decrease levels? I think resoundingly the answer would be no. Uh, and if we asked people if we wanted to reduce the gross domestic product of the country, I think the answer would be no. So uh, again, it also sometimes depends on the question you're posing. I won't deny the fact that uh, there's been a housing crunch, that people are really feeling at the end of the month that they, their mortgage rates have, uh, have taken a significant hit. Um, Sometimes the tendency is to find one easy solution. The reality, as you know, is immigrants aren't responsible for increases in the interest rates, uh, nor were they responsible for the housing challenges that I faced myself in my own riding when I ran in 2015, although in that context, uh, interest on debt was free, so it wasn't generalized feeling of anxiety. Now it's generalized across society, and I think the cost of living has, um, has led people to, uh, to, to look in different directions for answers, uh, and, and in some cases it's fallen on, um, on immigration levels. Uh, immigration is the solution to this, but it isn't the only solution. So part of the challenge I face is really getting a little more data, getting a little more refined in the way we do things, and the public policy tools that we use to implement them, uh, and make sure that we're continuing to, to build that general consensus in Canada that immigration is a good thing. Certainly, and, and in no way am I saying immigration is to blame for the housing crisis, but I am reading from the same company that did the same poll year after year in which they attribute the dramatic shift in public sentiment around immigration targets to the housing crisis. And I understand that your government insists that previous governments abdicated the space. I get that. There's a valid line of questioning there. But it did take your government a really long time to come to the conclusion that you were going to lead a federal housing strategy. And I just want to make sure I adequately challenge you in that how can Canadians listening to you tonight be confident that the supports that should be there in order to reverse the trend that we are seeing through that polling will be there in order to adequately welcome and properly welcome those new Canadians? Should they trust what you're saying, given how long it took your government to address the, the things like the housing crisis? Yeah, look, I certainly believe so. And uh, I'd also 
clarify a couple points is the, the, the housing strategies that we put in within uh, a year of our government are, were, were very important. It gave a lot of importance to the provinces doing their fair share of things. But what we realized quickly is that, uh, that, we, that, that we weren't doing enough. And that is why we have Minister Sean Fraser making sure that we leverage the housing accelerator to talk to provinces and cities about densification and challenges that they face in their own backyards, make sure we are doing our part federally uh, to, to, to fill that housing uh, that, 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 that housing challenge. The challenge I face as the Minister of Immigration, Refugees and Citizenship is making sure that I'm actually tailoring our public policies to welcome people in that can actually get those houses built. That's a challenge. It isn't completely fulfilled yet, uh, but that's stuff that I'll have to work over the next year to make sure we get right because 100,000 jobs missing in the construction industry should scare everyone uh, a lot and that is not something that we can fix with, um, with, with domestic labour alone. Okay, I'm out of time, Minister. I appreciate your time as always. Thank you so much.